We have two very special guests with us tonight, Jamie Elman and Ellie Battalion. They are the brains and the brawn behind the world's premier Yiddish comedy web series called Yid Life Crisis. If you haven't seen it yet, you absolutely should. Their comedy and their work generally explores the joys and complexities of Jewish life, ethics, and food culture in the contemporary world. You may remember them from their appearances at last year's Detroit Jewish Film Festival. They came in connection with their film, Judaism, and also did a wonderful live show at Ridley's Comedy Castle. Um, in addition to the, their Yid Life Crisis web show, they also have a web show that is essentially a travel log series where they visit different Jewish communities and explore what you know binds them together and what makes them different. And of course, they did a an episode on Detroit because Detroit is amazing. And the first uh, installment was published a while ago, but the newest installment is going to be premiered tonight. We're very excited about that. And of course, if you would like to support Yid Life Crisis and their work supporting our community, you can go to yidlifecrisis.com slash donate. I will put all these links in the chat box. Don't worry about it. So we are especially thrilled tonight to, to have Jamie and Ellie with us because it also gives us a chance to say mazel tov to Ellie on the birth of his first child. So welcome to both of you, mazel tov Ellie, and away we go. Shalom Aleichem. Thank you, Shalom Aleichem. Thank you for the kind words. Uh, it's a pleasure to see everyone tonight. Carol, Jeff, Marilyn, Brandon, Carolyn, Elaine. Let me take this off. Carol, how are you? What's going on? This is great. Okay, is this all working? This is wild. I think so. Do you hear us? Give us a big thumbs up. Okay, great. Okay. Great. And what about if we do this? Uh, a pleasure if we to say see you all. Aleichem. I said Shalom Aleichem. Ashenem Dunk. Okay, okay, wonderful. Wait a minute. Jeffrey Anders, what are you doing here? Okay. Oh my goodness. I guess you're roughly in the Detroit catchment area. Fine, that's acceptable. Hi, thanks for joining us. Who here is in the tropics? Brandon Luden. Boy, are we jealous. All right. Very I'm lucky right now. Very you know lucky. What? Zach oh, Berg, yes. yes, we'll be featuring you shortly. This is this is quite wonderful. First of all, in honor of our talk tonight, uh, I wanted to make this the virtual background. We were just having a conversation earlier on, which was a very deep philosophical conversation. Which was it goes as follows: Does a seven-layer cake actually have seven layers? I don't know if anyone can respond to this or knows the answer. Zach, I'm sure you have some input. But as you could see, I'm not sure that this is exactly seven layers and I'm not sure how you count them. So maybe well, at some point, someone could provide the answer. I mean, look, even if, even if you start getting into, you know, ask, ask 35 Jews if a seven layer cake has seven layers. I mean, there are literally tractates of Talmud that are written on this very topic, I assume. I don't know. Yeah. Baba, Baba Malayer. That's I've right. Baba, the Baba Malayer tractate, yeah. uh, I believe, discusses. And Rabban Gamliel specifically asks, do you count the seven layers or the seven layers within each of the seven layers? And is that representative of the days of the week and the creation? Anyways, Carol says, whoever counted, we don't give a shtus. Carol! Carol! Okay, now, uh, are we including the Shechina? Okay, it's gonna be, you know, I can't keep up with the code, but uh, the Shechina as a layer above all seven layers of the cake. Who asked that question? Listen, I thought we were clear about this, uh, Ellie. We need only, uh, only the, the, the Mamzerim and, and the Epikoirisim Okay, no, you're asking real questions. You want to know if the... Uh, okay, well, I would answer that question with a question. Is there an Eruv around the seven-layer cake? Good question. Okay, I don't know. Um, anyways, we're glad you're all joining us here. Uh, thank you. I just got a little bit of applause for... Oh, no, we know him, so... Yeah. Brian Siegel, thanks for joining. 
uh, here. By the way, uh, Jamie in, uh, De in Detroit, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm letting people in. It says their way, I have to admit them. I don't know, am I doing that right? You can do that too. That's right, right? I, I can do that too, yeah. Okay, you do that too, because I'm seeing people coming in and I just know that this is gonna end up with my mother telling me that she wasn't allowed in and I didn't allow her in and it was my fault and it was, has to do with something, you know, it's gonna turn into a Freudian thing. Boltsy, thanks for joining, how are you? Um, anyways, like, uh, I don't know, uh, like, like Jamie was saying, first of all, a couple things. Laser, why don't we tell them about this? Uh, because we, we've been to, to Detroit, not, not once, but twice. We had two great trips to Detroit and we had a wonderful time there, sponsored by the JCC, our friend Justin Wiedis, who brought us in, I guess the first time, was that like uh, three, four years ago now, it seems. Um, it, it feels like that's the right amount of time. By the way, I see Alan Havis asking who brought the babka. Alan, we thought you were bringing the babka. I don't know if we can continue with this. No, I agree with that. I th did he send us the Schwitzmobil? Nothing. He, okay. he did send us a Schwitzmobile. Maybe okay. we should, yeah, we can, let's back up the Schwitzmobile a little bit. First of all, by show of hands, how many people here are familiar with the Schwitzmobile in Detroit? Are the Detroiters familiar Detroit with it? Yeah, Zach Berg knows the Schwitz. And Zach Berg yeah. is well aware. Okay, how many of you have in Detroit have been to the Schwitz? Any of you? Okay, Brian, yeah, good, nice. All right, well, highly recommended. You don't have to be um, a Jewish. You don't have to be male. You don't have to be a nudist. But it helps. No, I don't. I, I, I that was not, uh, that's not the, it, it's not an, it's not a nude. Uh, anyways, if you watched Detroit uh, Rock Shtetl part one, you saw that we visited the, the Schwitz. And, um, and as we were there for a Hanukkah party a couple years ago, and it was sponsored by The Well and the JCC, and we had a great time. We did a show there, and we shot a bunch of uh, footage of us checking out Jewish Detroit. And we had a great time, great uh, tour. We ate very well, and we released part one. And as Jamie was mentioning at the beginning of the show, this is part of our global shtetl series where uh, we've gotten lucky enough in ways that we could never have imagined. You have to understand, when we started making the show, which is coming up on six years ago, making Yid Life Crisis, we didn't know that anyone would ever actually see it. Maybe, you know, our, our, our families, if we could explain to them how to find it on the YouTubes. And Carol, I saw you laughing at my parents just now. That's not very nice, okay? They're probably watching this right now. Like your clock isn't flashing 12 at home right now. Okay, nothing personal, Carol. Um, anyways, the point is um, we, we had a great time there, a great show. We shot a bunch of video. We went back. Uh, and did another show at, what was the Comedy Castle? What was it called, the Comedy Castle? Uh, Mark, Mark Ridley's Comedy Castle? Right, Mark Ridley's Comedy Castle. And we came back to do our live show there as part of uh, the, um, the Film Fest. Yeah. And yeah, sorry, I thought I heard, uh, whatever. And um, anyways, it's, um, it's uh, oh, is that what happened? I saw somebody just showed his, John, okay, guys, no, no revealing yourselves on camera if that wasn't clear already. Except for Michael Horvath's mustache. That oh. is acceptable, and I love it, and it's oh, perfect. Okay, yes. Don't change a thing. Thank yes. you. Pet, Thank you. J Jamie Block Pedro, he apparently just showed his schwanz. Um, anyway, uh, that's not even a joke. And by the way, if we know who oh, that is. Oh, 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 yeah. Uh, don't want Pedro. Pedro, you're out, you anti-Semite. No, he was actually trying to point out how to do a proper circumcision, which I appreciate. I had oh. to do it recently on my son. And uh, oh. well done, Pedro. Okay. But, well, uh, that'll right. be all. That'll be all for now. That's enough for Pedro. Anyway, uh, we probably should get to the video uh, out, of, uh, out of the risk of more Pedros. Um, I mean, a pandemic are Pedro. Live, Laser, are we going to live that paranoid in the No, we're not. As a matter of fact, we do, we do enjoy the element of surprise. Well, but, I, I, I think the short story is um, we came to Detroit on, on a couple occasions. Uh, the first, I would say, we might have been a little bit more downtown oriented. And then the second time, we experienced more of your West Bloomfield situation, including, by the way, eating at the Stage Deli. I don't know if, Jamie, we have uh, our Stage Deli photograph or, or anything to, to prove our presence there. Good but uh, I assume everybody here has been to the Stage Deli, correct? safe to yes okay 
All right, because we're, we're not willing to go on unless there's a minion of staged Elliers. That's right. Very good. There are enough people. So we had more of the, uh, I guess, suburban experience. And um, yeah, we ended up shooting this video and we divided it between some different areas. This, uh, this is not particularly a suburban uh, uh, video, this installment, but we did capture certain areas that we were able to, uh, to visit that showed another side of Detroit Jewish life, which we knew nothing about before showing up there and then realized afterwards that it was very rich, very robust. Um, I think the work speaks for itself in Yiddish. So sure. Sure. You just throw it to it. Okay. Look, so we're, 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 we're not that busy in life. So we'll take some questions live after we show the video. How's that? Is that the idea? We should just show them that there are some people here like Michael H who've been waiting to see this video for three years. Uh, Michael, enough. Genugshoin. This was for you. I can't, I don't even know why you wanted to see it so badly. But anyways, thanks to um, uh, Boltzi. Thank you for that. I love Yiddish. I see it. Um, and okay, we're going to show you the video. So this is part two. It was like three years in the making. We dug it out of the, out of the dust for, uh, for the quarantine times here. Thank you to Jamie Loeb in Detroit and to Nadav, who I don't know if he's on here right now. I don't see him. Is he on? Oh, okay, good. Nadav edited this for us, and we really appreciate that he did that. So anyways, uh, without further ado, let's throw it back to Mission Control in Detroit to watch uh, Global Shtetl Detroit, a.k.a. Detroit Rock Shtetl, part two. It's six minutes long, I think, and then we'll see you for questions about anything you want right after this. Okay, here we go. I don't know. I like Detroit so far. I'll say that. I'm schwitzing. Okay. You're totally schwitzing. Okay, cool. Building activity. Building activity. Where are we? We're at Yad Ezra. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. Ezra's hand. Yes, hand of hand of Ezra, helping hand. Is helping how, hand. Yes. Azor to help. Yes. So stop trying to show off. So yeah, this is Yad Ezra. We're a kosher food pantry. We serve uh, the Jewish community of southeastern Michigan. So we do a lot more than just give away food, but that is like the bread and butter of what we do. So um, to speak. No pun intended. Pun intended. Oh, it was. I heard you guys were comedians. So. <laughs> yeah. Don't well, believe everything you hear. <laughs> and with that, we headed in to get a tour of Southeast Michigan's largest kosher food pantry. We entered through the Giving Garden, a greenhouse where Carly Sugar and her team of menches grow food for the hungry. We serve uh, 3,000 individuals every single month. Wow. These are low income Jewish individuals and Jewish families who are for a variety of reasons down on their luck or find themselves in a position to need to ask for food assistance. So this is our food pantry. Um, it's all kosher. Everything is labeled with pictures and it's kind of in order um, by food category. So we are bagel experts and I do notice one of your supplies here is bagels. Yeah. Can we inspect? You can make yes. sure. Yeah. We're not, we're not, we're not starving Jews. <laughs> We are hungry. Um, I wouldn't eat this personally because they're kosher. So you you don't yeah, eat. I only eat kosher. Yeah, this is not. Mm. Yeah, this is not for us. We left hungry after realizing that all of Yad Ezra's food was too kosher for us. So we headed out to Ferndale, to a place called Provisions, where we heard that a famous local cheesemonger and chocolatier named Zach Berg could hook us up with some high quality treif. Hmm, Zach Berg. Jewish fella? You must hear a lot of puns in this I do, place. I do. Yeah. A lot of Jews for Jesus, you know? You are uh, a Jewish, right? I am. I'm a member of the tribe. I think you're also known for serving pork. I, I am. I am a Jew-loving, or a pork-loving Jew. A pork-loving Jew. And yeah. a Jew-loving, no, you're a, oh, never mind, I won't go. <laughs> We're actually located in a butcher shop. Uh, some of the best Michigan meats that I've ever seen. And then we added a cheese guy to the butcher shop experience. And then we also carry chocolates. So my partner, Will, is a chocolate expert. I'm the cheese expert. And then the butchers take care of all the uh, other proteins. I think we should try the Michigan cheese first. OK. So you. this is a goat cheese. Mm -hmm. You can always tell goat cheese because it's bone white, right? Mm -hmm. Cows carry carotene from the grass, so they get a little yellowish. Mm. Goat milk is always going to be bone white. And this is actually ash. 
the dark colors. The, the ash is edible. Everything is edible. You see, mine's almost gone already. Ashkenaz. Look, I am. Kiss my ash. Mm. So in this, in this theme, we're going to try, because we tasted all these goat milk, we're going to end with a nice goat milk chocolate. Chod god ya, chod god ya. Lachaim? Detroit. Detroit. Mm-hmm. After teasing our taste buds with trays of trafe and provisions, we made the trek over to Detroit Bagel Factory in Corktown to meet up with Jacob Smith, who, despite his last name, assured us that he is, in fact, Jewish. He's working at the forefront of the city's revival to bring together different communities from across the city. What's particularly interesting about Detroit that is unique compared to especially other American cities, um, but I think cities around the world, is that uh, Detroit and the suburbs for many years were very, very separated, almost like there was a, a wall in between. We didn't come to Detroit growing up. So despite the fact that I'm from West Bloomfield, about 30 minutes northwest, despite the fact that my grandparents are, are from Detroit, um, so I have proud family history here, for my parents' generation especially, and for the generation before, Detroit was just not a place that we visited for a wide variety of reasons rooted in anything from ignorance, fear, whatever whatever the case may be, fear of the unknown. Uh, it was a contentious historical relationship over the last however many years uh, between the, the suburbs and the city. Uh, and for the for the next generation coming up, the you know young professionals today, there's kind of this wave of, of reinvigorated excitement and energy with the, you know exploring the city and, and coming back down here to experience the amazing culture. That, that is already here and, and exists. With our stomachs fully reloaded on some delightfully dense yet surprisingly fluffy bagels, Jacob took us for a walking tour in downtown Motorstedel. Great. Where are we now? We are in Campus Martius Park. Uh, so this is arguably kind of the central business district of downtown Detroit. Uh -huh. um, so you see a number of you know these large, amazing buildings. Detroit used to be known as the Paris of the Midwest. It's known for its architecture, it's particularly with these big uh, crazy skyscrapers. What we're walking up to now is the Isaac Agri Downtown Synagogue. So it's actually the only freestanding synagogue left in Detroit. At Detroit's Jewish community peak, there were over 60 places of worship in the city. Uh, and now there's the one. So symbolic of the, the greater migration of, of Jews out of the city into the suburbs. Uh, but yeah, they've done an amazing job preserving the space. There's you know members that have been members for, for many years. Um, it's just an incredible historic space. Over our weekend in Detroit, we found the Jewish life here, like the city itself, is a Machaya Mason on a serious and joyous comeback. With all these young Jews feeding the hungry, selling healthy and sustainable food, and building new communities and connections in the city, we felt like we were leaving Detroit rock shtetl in very good hands. But back to putting Detroit things in our hands, and more importantly, our popics, there was only one thing left to do, of course, go to Coney Island for a Coney dog. A hot dog topped with beanless chili, mustard, and onions, which was somehow brought to Michigan by Greek immigrants, passing through Coney Island, which is actually New York, and which is beloved by other immigrants to Detroit, including us Jews. But first, let's start with some... Flaming Greek cheese? Hey. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hey. What the? F That's an opa. Opa! Is that for us? No. But anyways, l'chaim. L'chaim. Ein, zwei, drei, nash. Mmm, that's lovely. Good dog. Mm. Tastes like Detroit. White car, white car, white car, blue. All right. You just gave us the soundtrack to our entire documentary. All right. Okay, that was it. Randy, what's up? Good to see you. This is great. Where's Ken Davis? When we need him. All right. Thank you guys for watching that. We hope uh, we hope you like that. We want to first of all say thank you again to Nadav Pace. How do you pronounce it? Do you know, Jamie? What is it? It's, he pronounces it Pace Green Apple, but okay. I like to 
re-safardi it and call it pais green apple? That's what I, I agree. It's almost French Canadian. Pais. Wait, sister. Pais green apple. Thank you so much for that. Yes, Your sir. work was fantastic. Uh, that's, the that's... animation that you put on the screen throughout the video, really top notch, top shelf. Oh boy, okay, Pedro, and we gotta drop your one out. One. 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 one oh, out. one. Get one, one out, out there. Get one out. Remove. Okay, re I removed him. I was okay. gonna say, Jamie, it was, it was bad enough that our parents watched us eating so much trafe. Uh, now they're, they're watching other explicit uh, material, but that's okay. Because uh, quarantine is all about experiencing new things. I agree, and I, 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 almost, I almost feel like we've made it when, as Jews, we've been photobombed with some pornography. Uh, I, I agree. I am very, uh, I'm kind of proud. It justifies. Not, Anyways, moment. now, I think I can do this because I'm a host. We have, actually, Zach Berg and Jacob Smith, I believe, are on the thing. Zach, can we bring you on here? Zach Berg, are you speaking now? I, I can be right now. Yes. Okay, do you all see him now? If you go to speaker view, I guess you'll see him. Anyway, Zach, what's up, man? Good to see you. Good to see you guys. What a nice treat. I'm sitting here doing work, and I see this video go live. What a fun, fun experience. When you say you're sitting here doing work, is that preparing goat cheese? You know, I, I wish. I'm doing some of the, you know, less sexy parts of business ownership of uh, – Right. Payroll. Quick, the QuickBooks. Yes, yes. Um, so, Ellie, go ahead. No, I was just curious. Uh, I'm curious to know what's new. It's so awesome that you could join us. It was so cool to see you back then, which, as Jamie and I were saying, it was like three years ago, four years ago. And I'm yeah. curious, uh, you know, it sounds like you're still in the goat cheese game. Um, yeah, still slinging that cheese. What, still slinging that cheese, yo. So what uh, What else, uh, what, what have you been up to? What, when can you send us a care package? In three oh, years. Well, we're ready. We're ready. So we're, uh, we have two locations now. We're in Detroit proper, as well as in Ferndale. We're not in that exact location you visited us at. We're in a place called the Rust Belt Market, but it's also like a cool shared collection of spaces or a collection of businesses. And then in Detroit, it's just us. So we have our own space. We sell beer and wine, and we've been doing a bunch of like Zoom tastings, which have been fun. And How does uh, that work? Yeah, we're, we're, you know, we're kind of going national now with our uh, e-commerce and the realities of right now. And so that's really exciting as much as you can be excited about something right now. And uh, we're, we're staying cheesy. We're staying happy. Good. Good. Worth live by. Stay cheesy. Stay trafey. Stay trafey. Is, uh, <laughs> that's a philosophy of life right there. Yeah. No, we know that some people are going to say that we went to... We went to Detroit and we just ate a lot of treif while we were there, right? Because then we also go over and have the uh, the chili dogs there, which I don't think those are kosher. But it but is a beef heart chili. Don't ask, don't tell. Well said. That's well the policy. Said. Well said. Um, no, we uh, we really appreciate that you did that, and that's fun that we got to uh, get you on here now to see the uh, premiere of it tonight. Thanks for bringing me. And so can people still get uh, orders and deliveries and yeah. uh, whatnot? Yeah, check us out at mongersprovisions.com. I guess since you've seen us, we've expanded our name from provisions to mongers provisions. Right. So mongersprovisions.com. Um, and we're on all social channels. Follow us. We're still, you know, trying to have fun with it all. Well, uh, hang in there. It was great. Thank you for hosting us there. Um, it was fun. Monk, monk. Mong song, my friend. Yeah. Keep yes. monging. Yeah. Mong on. Mong thank on. You. All right. Thank thanks. You. Thank you to uh, thank you to Zach Berg for doing that. Go check out his uh, his place, Monger's Provisions, and um, and uh, and it was very good. They had great meat, great cheese, great chocolate. Now is Jacob Smith on this year now too? Can we bring him in to say a quick hello? I don't see him on the thing though. Okay, Alan Hayes. Yeah, I just want to say this is already better than all four Zoom satyrs I participated in. <laughs> I Mostly think Jacob is Jamie here. Had... I think Jacob is here. Jacob, can you hear us? Can hey. you say something? Jacob? Jacob? Hey. 
Sorry, I was muted before. What's we got going Jacob. On? Hey, Jacob, can we see you too or just hear you? Uh, I'm like out on a walk at the moment. I was, I got caught off guard here. So the best I can do is audio at the, at the moment. That's fair, but that's very unfortunate as you are one of the most photogenic and beautiful Jewish men going <laughs> right now. Yeah, so much the so, are you I the, 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 the Jewish boys calendar? <laughs> Were you not? If, uh, yeah, you got to hook it up. Yeah, so I, I guess don't, not. I don't know where that's you might ask, how do I know that? That's another question for a whole other Q&A. But for the time being... Can, can, can I just say that that was fantastic? I enjoyed that immensely. Oh, thank you. Thank you. No, that is... The Jewish Boy Calendar? <laughs> uh, yeah, the film. We're glad, glad you liked it. We hope you were satisfied with our portrayal of you. <laughs> as, the, as the very aware, hip young Jew <laughs> of downtown. Yeah, I, yeah. I enjoyed our conversation as well. Yeah, there we go. You see that? Oh, that, was, that was fun. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Yeah, no, it was great. Uh, so what do you want to give us, can you give us an update on yourself and uh, maybe, in a, you know, weirdly speak on behalf of the uh, Detroit Jewish community? <laughs> no how pressure. everybody's doing. No pressure. It's a, it's a big ask on the spot, I will say, but... Uh, I'm good. I'm hanging out at home. I'm in social uh, social distancing here. Uh, hanging out, using my time productively, trying to support the community the best that I can while focusing on work. Uh, I'm currently running a space downtown uh, that relies very heavily on physical space as part of our strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, bringing together software developers. It's called Collider through a company called Ultimetric. Um, so we very quickly shifted our whole situation to virtual, which has been challenging, but rewarding. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, that stuff's going well. And then, uh, yeah, doing work with JCRC, AJC, um, your uh, work with, uh, different community building initiatives and some different cool things. Everything's good. I literally don't know how you have the time to do everything that you do. It is Hi. very <laughs> Yeah, I was going to ask you, I think last time we were talking to you, you were involved in either you were involved or you were tangent to people involved in the like Ford mobility navigation, like digital cars space, or maybe I'm just losing my mind. I, I've done some different things peripherally, including the company I'm currently working for. A large majority of our staff in Michigan works for Ford. Mm -hmm. um, kind of, it's uh, yeah, it's like a consulting company that works with large corporate clients to help them develop technology better. Mm -hmm. uh, so we supply like a hundred engineers at Ford, and most of them work on future mobility. Mm -hmm. You are the future. You of the Jewish community. Take your bits of future. Let him lead and let him lead the way. All right, that's all. <laughs> You guys are funny as well. Um, we, uh, we're, we're glad you took us on that tour. What about the synagogue there downtown? That still, is that still intact? The Isaac, what's it called? The Isaac Agri? Oh, man. Of course. Okay, good. Not going anywhere. Okay, I am good. actually a member there. They are, they are real. Oh, good. Good, good, good. Um, send, them, send everyone over there our best. Also, the rabbi that we met and the pastor that we met. If you haven't watched Detroit Rock Shuttle Part 1... You could find that on our uh, YouTube channel and on our website, as well as some of you've been asking. I see I'm looking at some of the comments here. So yeah, we've done uh, we've done tours like this in other cities and had experts like Jacob. Uh, in the, by the way, we shouldn't make just Jacob just sit there and have to. Sh Jacob, thank you for being on. Thank you for joining us. And you're a mensch, and Detroit is lucky to have you. Um, and uh, we will also be posting the episode up on our YouTube page and on Facebook and all that you can watch later and we'll share the link around and stuff. But we also have stuff um, uh, on our website and on our YouTube channel, which is from the rest of our global shuttle series. So, oh, Michael H is already asking for more stuff. Is there lost footage that can be put together? We have probably? a hard drive that we can ship you. If you are so inclined, you can go through splice by splice. Yes. If you could it. cut it for us, we'd appreciate it. We have tons of unused footage, actually. But you can go and see uh, our trips to Krakow, Poland, 
and also to um, New York and uh, Kensington Market in Toronto. And where else do we go? Tel Aviv, of course. Speaking of Tel Aviv, I want to mention um, here on the West Coast, it's 4.30 over there. It's 7.30 tonight uh, here in North America begins Yom Hazikaron, Israel's uh, Remembrance Day for the Fallen Soldiers. And, um, and then tomorrow night starts Yom Ha'atzmaut, Israel's Independence Day. And uh, I wore this t-shirt here and I've been thinking about Israel here. It's my Bira Budweiser uh, t-shirt. This is a classic back from the early 90s. Uh, yeah, Boltz has that shirt. There you go. Adi, you must have uh, sent this shirt to a few people. I think, hey, buddy, he's in Tel Aviv. And um, anyways, we're thinking of Israel, and we know it's a, it's, a, it's a sad day tonight and a happy day tomorrow, and it's a time that we have conflicting feelings about, especially in, uh, in the quarantine times here. But um, anyways, we're thinking of our uh, brothers and sisters in Israel, and wish everybody a Chag Sameach, Yom Ha'atzma'ut Sameach uh, in a couple of nights. Uh, hi, Robert David, joining us in Toronto. Thank you. We saw somebody's joining us from Australia. What time is it over there? Uh, also, by the way, Alan Havis is on from the Schwitz, and uh, we want to we want to thank him also for. I have a picture of this actually. Uh, hang on, from when Alan uh, picked us up. Hang on, I have to share my screen for this. Want to give them a shout out. Um, yeah, here we go. Photos. Yes, uh, we were picked up in the Schwitz mobile. Can you see it now? That's it, right? And, uh, and then he gave us an incredible present, which was he brought us this, uh, this babka from Star Bakery. Um, and that was a hell of a way to get to, um, to Detroit, must say. I'll be honest with you, that was gone in about five hours. Yes, yes. I also, by the way, on a related note, oh, that's a nice, that's six layers. What's going on here? It looks like a talus. It's, it's a lie. Okay, it's a lie. Yeah. It's yeah. a hoax. Uh, you're talking about your shirt. I just want to say this has nothing to do with Yom Ha'atzma'ut, but I purposefully wore the same shirt as from the video to prove that despite how much weight I gained at that point, I could still fit in this at this point, and Shikoya. also to show how needy I am that I still need to wear the same shirt. Shikoya. Shikoya. Just wanted to share that with you. Yeah, no, you still look great. Thank you. Um, and by the way, I think now is as good a time as any for a plug of uh, something else, which we wanted to mention. Speaking of Global Shtetl, so we started doing this thing where we'd get invited to a city like Detroit to perform our live show. And then we thought, hey, we're having great adventures, eating great Jewish food, meeting interesting people th from the community. So we started documenting that in the Global Shtetl series in New York, in Tel Aviv, in London, England, in Kensington Market, Toronto, uh, and, uh, and uh, in Krakow, Poland. And finally, we did the big one, our hometown of Montreal. And we turned that one into a full-on feature-length film called Judaism, A Taste of Jewish Montreal, which played at the Detroit Jewish Film Festival uh, two years ago? No, one year yeah, ago. One year ago. Okay, yeah, I was about to be like, Jesus. Honestly, time in quarantine is like, um, was it one year ago or 15 years ago? I don't even know. She Sheldon Weisberg, thanks for joining. Uh, anyway, so we have this, um, this DVD, uh, which we cannot get to you now. We sell it at our live shows. And um, however, and, and it, we were really proud of it. It's, it's got a Montreal bagel. Uh, as the DVD, which were very, you know, when, when, when you don't, when you can't get the real thing, this is uh, powerful. But anyways, uh, we know that people are bored out there. So um, we are saying uh, that for the next, what do we say? For a week, for a week starting now. So by Sunday, May 3rd, 11.59 PST PM. Okay, you heard it from Lucky Laser just now. Any donation to Yid Life Crisis via our website will get you a streaming uh, link to watch the movie, okay? So even if you give $1.18 or $180, if you give $18,000 in USD, whatever it is that you deem is appropriate, Go to our website, yidlifecrisis.com. You'll go to support us, and it's a pay-what-you-can situation. So long as it's a denomination of 18. 
right. will not accept anything else. That's right. 18 cents will get you the movie. I say 1800 is reasonable. Um, counting. Really. Yeah, now, that's right. Oh, there, thank you. We, 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 put a, we put a link right now. Yes. Uh, okay, now, we got a question. Why don't we take a question? Yeah, that was the point of this, wasn't it? So, oh, right. there, there have been a few questions. Oh, okay. Um, Amy, hit us. One uh, was asking, um, what are your next projects during lockdown? Um, okay, well, for me, I'll just start by saying I'm planning on gaining the quarantine 15 and then taking it off. That's all I got planned right now. Laser? You're occupied. Yeah. Uh, well, we're up to a bunch of stuff. I mean, look, it's obviously hard. A lot of what we do is our live touring uh, lately. And as you know, with the world in, uh, in Drek at this point, it's very difficult to determine that. But we're looking at different places to go uh, when uh, maybe bef between the first and second waves, we might have a little jaunt. And then maybe between the second and the third, and then we'll pick up a vaccine and then we'll see. But uh, no, we were actually, we were talking to Joy Z today about coming out to Joy Z. Uh, I also see here, oh, Pais, Green Apple, I see you now. He's there, yeah. that's right. Uh, we talk, Jersey, I also yeah. see somebody mentioned about Providence. J Jeff, is it from Providence? Um, we, uh, so I went to school in Providence and uh, I would love to return. We were speaking to someone at a temple there uh, like all things Jewish uh, organization related, they take about 24 months to to ferment. But we're hoping to get there. We actually, just, what's crazy is we've never even done Boston at this yeah. point. By the way, if anybody out there is watching from Boston, why haven't we been to Boston to do the show yet? Let us know if we can come. I think Robbie also, David is saying uh, it's uh, not worth selling out our principles to go to Boston. So that's I mean, understandable. Yeah. That's why, is it because of the Montreal Canadiens thing? We get it. Yeah. Um, now, by the way, uh, Stefan Gleiberman, Gleiberman, Reb Gleiberman, he says, here's his question. If Jason Alexander and Richard Dreyfus had a baby, you would be that baby. Stefan, that is not a question, I don't think. Was that a question? That's a Jewish I, I, Q&A question. I, I think he was mid conversation oh, with I someone. See. But oh, we was... have we we have another actual question. What oh. was the hardest episode for the two of you to make? And also I think he was saying you looked like Jason Alexander. Like you specifically, Jamie. Jamie okay. looks like Jason Alexander? If, if I'm only, offended. If only I had his gelt. All right. Anyway. Um, help at all? No? Ridiculous. You get the Jason Alexander comment? George is getting upset! I'm out. Okay, don't, all right. Um, yes, well, I, okay, Ellie, we can each answer that question. Yeah, why don't you go first? Okay, hardest episode to shoot, I don't know, if you're fans, um, then I'll reference a couple things here. The most recent episode um, that we shot, the season three finale, is called an anti cementish episode. And in that one, we dealt with uh, the current uh, feelings about anti-Semitism and, um, and uh, the graffitis and the violence. And that was really hard to write and hard to figure out how to do and hard to get permission to go, you know, back to our hometown and ask if we could, um, you know, put a swastika up on the wall of the park. Like it was a very complicated and political and and tricky thing to do, but we felt that we had to, we felt that we had to, we, we felt that we had to talk about anti-Semitism, uh, you know, when we started the show five, six years ago, as you all know, it was a different world. Um, why am I wearing the mask indoor? There's no one here. Anyway, sorry. Um, so the, yeah, the, dealing with anti-Semitism was a very tough one from a, from a, from a point of view of both shooting and writing and knowing how to handle the material and trying to touch on anti-Zionism and all the complicated crisisian issues that we, that we try and touch on in the show about being Jewish nowadays and being paranoid about anti-Semitism, how much of it is real, how much of it is in our minds. We know it's real, but we can't let it control us and how much of anti-Zionism is really just anti-Semitism. These were really hard things for us to talk about, think about, write about, and, um, and to try and deliver on the episode. Did we do it? I don't know. I'm happy we did it. I think Laser agrees that we're happy we did it. Um, and it was, it was difficult. Um, anyways, that would be mine that's hard. But I would just add, arguably, 
the richer episode would have been the true life episode of going to your park picture in West Bloomfield, you want to do an episode about anti-Semitism and you have to go to the city council to say, can I spray paint a swastika on our cherished park in order to depict this hypothetical situation happening and then watch as 12 Jews negotiate whether or not that should happen. That's a play at the very least, uh, but certainly a, a very good episode, which we should have filmed. Uh, also the part where we were sure that we had cleaned it off and then a week later we just haphazardly returned to find it was sort of still there. That's also another episode. Uh, which uh, I don't want to relive in my mind. But in any case, that was a tough one, for sure. Yeah, I would say, I mean, from my standpoint, Jamie, one of our toughest was our autoneurotic one that took place in a car. Yes. Not because cars are hard to shoot in necessarily, but because we had to eat Chesky's babka yes. on repeat. And it's like anything. It's like these commercials, you know, they make the food look really good, but when you have to eat it over and over again, two problems. Uh, in, in this case, the Cheskis, it did not stop getting as good. If anything, it only compounded and it got better. But uh, part of our main issue is just the increased amount of weight that being part of the Idlib crisis takes as a toll on us. And that was very hard. There was a lot of sacrifice for our art uh, with that one. We do it uh, for you people. We do, we it, do for it for you. you. And we strictly for, yeah, we do. We do it for Liz Nason. We do it for Sean yeah. Weisberg. We do it for Joshua. I see up there. I see you, Joshua. I do it for Robert Sly. You know, we, we even do it for Pedro. Even no, we don't know. Pe no, Pedro Geligen and Dreert. Yeah, <laughs> we should hope so. careful. I'm sure he okay. speaks. Anyways, um, okay. okay. Do we have any more questions, uh, Jamie? So here is a totally uncontroversial one. Okay. Um, what city has the best bagels? Come on, guys. Wait, can I? Can we put a qualifier here? Are we taking Montreal in, already out of the equation? It in be, your okay. experience, I mean, you've been around the world. You've eaten a lot of bagels. I mean, your whole anyone's hometown bagels are by definition their favorite. But you know, no, you know, I think I think you'd be surprised. Uh, we see a comment from Montreal that someone said it's not a question; it's Montreal. Uh, thank you, Robbie David. Um, Look, it's not an opinion. We agree. It is, it is the best bagel. Even New Yorkers admit that. And by the way, Jamie, you'd be, you'd be fascinated to know maybe that when we travel to other cities and do our live show, that local people in their cities always will say things to us. Like we get them to say, guys, we're so happy to have you come to our city to entertain us. Just warning you, our bagels are dreck. People so, feel bad. Yeah, people are, have no problem talking about um yeah. you know montreal uh, yes thank you. all right we thank, thank you guys you. for uh, for agreeing with us okay yes um what, montreal agreeing with us of course uh yeah, um, yes the montrealers will will always agree with us I, uh, I would just like to extend an olive branch though and say in a very diplomatic way that when in rome when in new york i appreciate what a New York bagel can be as a matter of fact and this is going this is very controversial and i may even get shut down Sometimes when you need a bagel, even like Dunkin' Donuts will work. I I'm sorry, but it depends on your level of desperation. Can okay, we read that, 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 that part of the transcript? Maybe I should take that back. I don't think uh, Jamie. I, uh, the, oh, Jamie, uh, Loeb, if you could cut this yep. out, that, that part out <laughs> later. We're going to um, get hated. Alan, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry that came out of my mouth, and I think I'm about to be canceled. No, look, I know, no, okay, look, I'll give you this. I know what you mean. Back in the day when I was a kid growing up, and we'd leave Montreal to go on a, on a, on a road trip for the day to um, Lake Placid, we'd go cross-border shopping. It was exciting and fun for us to get Lenders bagels. Yes. As a treat. It's not, nothing to do with St. Vieta or Fairmont. It's just a different treat that you get a Lenders bagels and they're made in the machines and it, they taste like America. Yes, I think we were getting a different view of America. But also this, I've been thinking about this recently and I was like, did Lenders bagels do us a disservice as a people? Because if you think about it, Lenders bagels, it's like, imagine there was a, a brand of bagels called Financiers Bagels. That's basically what it is. It so is. I don't think that was very good for our people in general that Murray came out with his lenders, but he could have at least changed his last name. 
Yeah, you could have no. made up a name like the Jewish guy that ran Hagen Das, because apparently Hagen Das doesn't stand for anything, and it's not that, Yiddish. That's so right. That's right. No, um, we are see it. Lenders are awful. We're literally losing fans. <laughs> people are dropping like flies. At Why? Yeah, it's like people are going to stop following us. Um, listen, Liz, we're not saying that lenders aren't awful. We're saying they're a fun little treat when you're from Montreal. It's like, how does the rest of the world live? Mm, it's the one Brand okay, Lenders bread. is the wonder bread of big. Okay, you know what? We're gonna get in deep shit for this. Never mind. Listen. By the way, by the way, so I was just uh, seeing my shirt again and thinking about Israel and Yom Hatzma'ut. And I just want to say, for those of you out there who care, I just finished season three of Fauda. Has is anybody onto this? You guys know what I'm talking about, Brian. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, Beth Garfield. She's having a snack right now. She doesn't care about Fauda right now. It's fine. Um, okay, uh, the Schlimes, he's maybe watching. I don't know. Adi, you probably think it's all a bunch of Hara, but, uh, and Sydney Mintz, I hope you're watching Fauda. Least relaxing show to watch during quarantine. That's I mean, why I can't, not... I can't watch it. It's such spilk. It's worse than watching Curb, where you know inevitably something horribly socially awkward is going to happen. Here, yes, it's fiction, but it's not really fiction and it's happening. Yeah. I'm going to say I didn't watch season three. I'm very excited. Uh, Tammy, I think, did, and she thinks it's amazing. Yeah. I've seen the first two seasons, and I have to say I think it's about the best television I've ever seen. But I wanted to add, particularly for this q and I don't know if anyone here of the Detroit set has, she has seen the show Detroiters. Is this ringing a bell for anyone? Anyone from Detroit? This exists? Yes. Beth knows what I'm talking about. It's uh, your, your hometown boys, Tim Robertson and Sam Richardson. And I got to say, I, I feel like I miss Detroit seeing it. I mean, the show is more really about them than it is about the city, but the way that it brings in various elements of Detroit, I think you should be proud of yourselves. Yeah, yeah. No, look, you could tell from the video, Detroit uh, has a thriving Jewish community and it wasn't what we were expecting. And it's as always more diverse and not monolithic and doing interesting things with food. And I mean, who would have thought, of course, that, you know, Jews are behind the most trafidic food in Detroit. Um, yes, Ed, thank you. Somebody wrote, Ainsfei Drei Nash. And what was the other one? Oh, Detroit's New York Bagel Factory. Yes, and where we went, actually, that was a delicious sandwich, I have to say. I don't know if you guys caught it in that video we just showed. But the, the, the sandwich we ate here, I had a picture of it somewhere. The sandwich we ate at the Detroit Bagel Factory. Jamie, am I saying that right? Detroit Bagel Factory, yes. Was it that or was it the Detroit Institute of Bagels? That's what I was trying to figure out. I think I might have had it wrong oh, there. Oh, Brian, is it the second one? I see oh. you nodding. Hold on. Detroit Institute of Bagels, isn't it? Okay, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Okay, yes. Are these two separate places or have or two different are we places? Oh. Detroit Bagels, New York Bagels, and Detroit Institute of Bagels. Right. Okay. Oh, yeah. I want that so badly right now. That's Look at this, Ellie. Now, so anyways, for somebody to, to Jamie asking the best bagels, like, yes, the Montreal bagels are incredible, but this bagel locks and cream cheese and capers on an everything bagel from the Detroit Institute of Bagels is something that I would pay, I don't know, I would pay $500 for that right now. If that could just magically appear on my lap, that was very worth it. Anyways, we had a good time there. Should we, oh, Alan's drooling. We better not put any more stuff like that up. Sarasota, Florida, thank you for coming on. Uh, oh yeah, right, uh, Adam Boltz. We saw you in Montreal mentioning that uh, you just wanted to make sure everybody knew that I was on Curb Your Enthusiasm. Thank you for mentioning that. Yes, I was. It was season six, episode five, The Freak Book. Go watch that. Uh, and if, if Fauda and Curb Your Enthusiasm is too stressful for you, I would say check out Stissel for some nice, much less stressful uh, viewing. It's, it's, it's a family drama. It's in Yiddish. It takes place in the Haredi community in Israel. And it was very interesting. I just want to point out that, Jamie, I think this is the first time we've gotten to see Joshua Tarplin directly. And it's a pleasure. And also, with regards to your question, 500 Canadian. Excuse me. Yes, 500 Canadian. Wait, we're should... talking about roughly 330, 340 US dollars for Jamie to have that bagel on his lap right now. If, if anyone said- Anything more would, would be uh, overpriced. No, no, I agree. That's a huge mitzvah if somebody sends that to us now. 
uh, let's see. Uh, Robert Ashman. Yeah. Or are we out of time? I guess we're getting there, right? Eh? Oh boy. Um, yes, yeah. It runs up to so many things. I'm Robert sure. Hashheim. No. Robert Ashheim, where are you? I can't. I can't say. Maybe he's hidden. I see he him. Read Born to Fetch. Uh, I have not read. Jamie, did you read Born to Fetch? No. This is a, a book by Michael Wex. This is the Vex. Yes, I've read some of it. I've not read the whole shebang, to be honest with you. Uh, he's great. We know him. We've met him a few times. He's uh, born to fetch. He has a few great books. If you're looking for some Yiddish comedy, Yiddish-ish comedy, check out Michael Wex for sure. Um, what else? What was your favorite? Oh, filming in Israel, the Sender's Deli. Yes, if any of you are ever, ever have a chance to go to Tel Aviv and eat at Sender's Deli in the Florentine district of Tel Aviv. God, I hope it'll still be there when uh, this is all over. Um, it was uh, delicious Ashkenazic food. Hard to find in Israel quite like that. Um, and yes, I was in Johnny Mnemonic. If, I don't know what that has to do with it. Thank you for Michael H for knowing that. All right, look, I don't know. I feel like we should leave them wanting more. Laser, um, what do you think? Should we close this out with the- uh, players? Um, I, I, I suppose so. I don't know, Jamie, is there any, uh, sorry, load? Well, is there I, any I, I think we can bring this all together with one answer we found to a burning question. Yes. Is that it's seven layers of cake and six layers of cream. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, thank you guys for joining us tonight. Thank you everyone who joined the call. Thank you to Jaime and Laser. Thank you for the video. And we'll see you all again. We have another Zoom event Wednesday night uh, with some musicians. But in the meantime, go to Yiddish, no, yidlifecrisis.com slash donate. Give, give, give the nice boys some money and they will let you watch their wonderful film in case you missed it at film festival or if you just want to see it again because it's a great film. So thank you, everyone, and have a great night. Ashane Imhaf. Good night, Thank everyone. You. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you. Bye, Laser. Good to see you guys. Thanks for coming on. Keep those drops. Like a zint. Like a zint. <laughs>